Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about how to differentiate and integrate Maclaurin series, um, which is not really a difficult process because a Maclaurin series is basically just a bunch of terms that are being added or subtracted. So uh, according to the rules of differentiation and integration, all you would have to do is find the derivative or the antiderivative term by term. There would be no product rule um, or quotient rule involved in that. So let's just look at uh, some examples. We're going to show that the derivative of sine of 2x is 2 times the cosine of 2x. We know that based on chain rule, but um, it would help uh, make us feel better about it if the Maclaurin series uh, followed that same relationship. So there is the Maclaurin series for sine of x. Um, we know that from earlier lessons. And so sine of 2x is just going to be the same series, but every x is replaced with 2x. And I just put that in parentheses. So if I simplify that, that is what I would get. I have to remember to apply the exponent to the coefficient as well as the x. And that's why those numbers are getting bigger in the numerator. So that is the sine of 2x. So now if I take the derivative of this, um, there's really nothing complicated about that series. So I'm just taking the derivative term by term. So the derivative of 2x would just be 2. The derivative of 8x to the third would be 3 times 8x squared, um, which I didn't really simplify. I just wanted you to see the process of how I'm doing that. I'm multiplying by the old exponent and then uh, lowering the exponent by 1 to get the derivative. So that's the process there. And um, I'm just rewriting it here because I ran out of room on the previous slide. So I'm going to keep going and just simplify a little bit. The threes will cancel. Um, in the second term there, and the fives will cancel in the third term, the sevens will cancel in the fourth term, and that pattern would continue if I had more terms. So you see what I have there is 2 minus 8x squared over 2 factorial and so on. Remember, I'm trying to make this look like something specific, so I'm not really going to simplify these terms. I want it to look like a different Maclaurin series. So I need to remember what cosine looks like as a Maclaurin series so that I can kind of shape this um, infinite expression to look like that. So I notice that 2 can be factored out of each of those terms. So that's exactly what I do. And I get that series in parentheses. So that's starting to look a little bit more like the cosine Maclaurin series. Um, and so what I notice is um, I can rewrite the numerators um, inside the parentheses of the second, third, and fourth term, and I would be able to do that with more terms uh, if I had them. Um, so I'm rewriting 4x squared as 2x quantity squared. 16x to the fourth is 2x all to the fourth. 64x to the sixth is 2x all to the sixth. So what I'm noticing is I've got a 2x in every numerator, and it's being raised to an even exponent, which is behaving a lot like cosine x does. That is actually an exact um, copy of what 2 times the cosine of 2x would look like. So I've basically kind of shown that the derivative of sine of 2x is um, 2 cosine 2x because the Maclaurin series do follow that pattern. That's not a formal proof, but it's just kind of comforting to know that it still works for Maclaurin series. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use what we know about Maclaurin series and integration to find an antiderivative of e to the x squared. Now e to the x squared doesn't actually have an antiderivative, so I really have nothing to compare this to. So I'm going to have no other choice but find a Maclaurin series that will approximate the antiderivative of e to the x squared. So there's e to the x. We know that Maclaurin series well. So e to the x squared would look exactly the same, but every x will be replaced with x squared. So my second term of x will become x squared, the third term will become x to the fourth over two factorial, and so on. I'm basically doubling the exponents that are already there in e to the x to get e to the x squared. All right, so if I take the antiderivative, again, term by term, because it's not complicated, um, I'm going to get that uh, it is the antiderivative of that same thing that I just wrote. So term by term, that's going to be, I always have to have a constant of integration. Then the antiderivative of 1 is going to be x. The antiderivative of x squared is going to be x to the third over 3, and so on. So that's how I get my antiderivative of e to the x squared. All right. So it's kind of a neat process. It really doesn't get any more complicated than that. Um, because all you're doing is finding antiderivatives and derivatives term by term. 
So if you have any questions about this, please let me know and I will see you tomorrow.